Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG. And today I'm, I'm reading through this specification because I've had a lot of requests over the years and even more so recently, uh, how does a welder certify? And gosh, there are so many different types of certifications out there, but um, I specialize a lot in, in aerospace type welding. And so I've certified for years and years and I started looking at one of these specifications and a guy recently came to me and says, why can't I use this specification to certify myself and my company? And I build race cars. Well, I, I guess you can. So uh, this specification that I'm looking at is, uh, is the rewrite of several specifications. And I'm gonna try to make it easy for you. It's tough, it's tough. If you try to read through this and, and do your own certification, uh, it's hard to make sense of. But this one's called the AWS D17.1 specification. It's about 86 pages, and it's in a three-ring binder here. And so if, if you're a big company, you probably have a quality control person that'll go through and decipher exactly how do you certify. But what if you're a one-man shop? Well, I want to address the one-man shop because that's the hard part in all this. So I'm going to make sense of it. I just want you to know that if you want this spec, you can get it. We can't forward it to you. But uh, AWS has a bookstore. So go to their bookstore in D17.1. But in the meantime, we're going to share excerpts with you. And we have our spec right here. There's thousands and thousands of ways to certify. So in, in many cases, you're just going to use common sense. But I want to go down through a few here. And this particular program is only talking about this certification. And then over the years, you're going to see us do actual certifications. And, and one that we're going to do very soon is going to be tubular. How do I certify to do 4130 chrome molly in tube if I'm building a, a frame of some sort, an aircraft? Or if I'm building a race car, how do I certify my welder? Well, let's go down through this D17.1 first. <clears throat> it has taken all kinds of specs. It took the old MIL T5021, MIL standard 1595, 8604, and it just it took a bunch of specs and just combined them, put them all into one. Uh, so that's a good thing. So you have to ask the question, well, what do I have to do? What are my physical requirements to be a certified welder? Well, you have to be in good health and you just have to have good manual dexterity. Uh, you also have to pass the Jaeger uh, number two test, and you have to recertify that test every two years. So go down to your doctor's office, take that, get a little certificate, and you're good to go for two years. Now, what we want to do is we want to break this down very, very specific. We're only going to weld on this 4130 right now. So our certification is going to have certain requirements. We have to identify the welding process. This spec covers everything. So we're going to talk about gas tungsten arc welding. And it's going to be important because you're going to have to fill out a form when it's all said and done. So GTAW is the form that you're going to fill out and I'll show it to you in a minute. You got to know the base metal. The base metal is 4130 chromoly. Okay, you need to know the thickness. And why? Because that thickness that you weld is going to allow you a certain range that you can weld on your parts. Uh, let's see. It, you have to know whether it's sheet or tubular. If you notice here, I've got two flat sheets. If you certify to flat sheets, that's all you can weld. You can't weld tubular. And tubular gives you a total different aspect. You can weld kind of out of position because that's the only way you can weld tubular. Okay, uh, so if there's any other conditions uh, that are special, sometimes you have to weld them in heat-treated conditions depending on what your company is, is working on. So those are the basic requirements. Now, once you pass this certification, you're good for two years before you have to do it all over again. Now, there is an exception to that rule. If your company uh, can maintain records and show that you weld on that in a six-month period, you can just continue on and on and on and on. And the only time you can be disqualified is if, if your eyesight gives out, if your mechanical functions give out, and you can be disqualified by just about anyone, quality control, uh, the boss. So just know that this is one of those things you just want to constantly maintain. Okay, so um, we've gone through the, the eye test. Now, the two-year eye test, what we're talking about, 
you can use corrective lenses when you're doing the eye test. So the only thing is when you pass that test, it's going to say with corrective lenses and you need to use those corrective lenses when you're welding. Okay, the next thing, the qualification or the thickness range. You have to pick out a thickness. Now, I'm going to pick this material right here just because it shows real well. This is 035 wall thickness. This happens to be aluminum. But once I certify on this aluminum, I'm good to weld all aluminum. And the formula is 35 thousandths times 0.67T. So that means I can go down to, I don't know, I think that's 22, 23 thousandths wall thickness, and I can go 4T, so I can do 120 thousandths wall thickness. So you need to determine that long before you start. Your company can get tied up with literally tens of thousands of dollars in costs and certification. So now that we've covered that, uh, now we go to the different classes. Now this, this spec covers everything. It covers class A, B, and C. What does that mean to you? Well, first of all, if you certify to Class A, I can assure you that everything is under a requirement that's very, very stringent. Usually it's rotables or high-stress aircraft parts. Uh, almost everything is x-ray. Uh, the only time it is an x-ray is if it's just not x-rayable, and then you may have to use an alternate type of process, ultrasonic or something like that. Uh, most of the weldings you're going to want to do, not necessarily for aerospace, but let's say non-critical hardware or non-flight hardware. If you're welding on a race car, it's non-flight hardware. So I'd make everything class B. And that's going to be important because you're going to cut a purchase order to a lab to do the testing for you. So you got A, B, and C. Uh, C is non-critical in, in any way. Uh, most of it's just a visual and penetrance. So you can see that there's three different levels. So I've gone ahead and I've, uh, <coughs> I've, I've picked this test to be the first one that we do, the 4130. And... I've taken some pages that you're going to have to fill out, and I've taken them out of this spec, and I'm going to share these with you. Uh, the first one is a uh, qualification test record. Okay, you're going to have to fill this out, or somebody in your group is going to have to fill this out, and what you're doing is you're saying, I did this welding, this is how I did it, um, and you sign it off. And this is your test weld. It tells you the position that you welded in. So just remember, position is critical. If you weld flat, it doesn't allow you to weld vertical up or horizontal, so pick that out. Okay, so that's one sheet, and it'll be on the notes here at the end of the show. Now, the next thing is you've got to take a look at the material groups, and I'm going to read these very quickly, but you've got a group 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, all the way down to a group 6. Now, here's what 1A is. It's carbon and alloy steels. 1B is heat treatable alloys. Okay, that's where the 4130 falls in. So we're going to use 1B for our certification. That's in the package. This next one is called a WPS. That's a weld procedure specification. What's critical about this is that you, the operator, need to fill this out and it helps you understand exactly what you're going to do how you're going to do it, what gases you're going to use, what kind of filler, what kind of diameter. and It has all those details on it. Are you going to weld it on AC or DC? Is it aluminum, AC, DC? Uh, what's your voltage? What's your amperage? Now, the thing about it is when you're welding, you can't see. You're using a foot control most of the time. So a lot of that's just a reference. That's in the package as well. Okay, this one here is called a PQR, um, and this has to be filled out. It's got a visual inspection, a bin, bin test, a tensile test, x-ray. This has to be filled out and signed by your lab. Now, if you happen to have a lab in your own company that's certified, great. This is the form that they're going to use. This is in your package. Okay, so now... Everything that you do has to be certified. It has to have traceability. You can't just go out and weld something and send it to a lab and say, hey, Joe, did it pass? No. It has to have authorized people buy it off. Your lab or the persons in the lab are qualified. So make sure that you ask them to certify to D17.1. Now, your internal controls should be this. 
when you order material, you have to know that it's 4130. Now, we've asked a company, and I'm just giving them a plug because they volunteered this for me, a company called AED, and I asked them to put together a package for 4130 chromoly. And this package tells you the heat lot number, the material type, the wall thickness. So you got control. And there's also inside here, there's a little uh, uh, test certificate of the materials. So make sure you have that, keep that into your quality control package. So that's, that's just really a thumbnail of all this. We're going to do literally hundreds of tests and tell you what it qualifies. Okay, now here's the critical part in all this. If you want to certify, if you want to get these metals, you can buy metals and you can cut them and you can miter them, do all the things that you want. But we've gotten this one company, AED, Motorsports Products, to do it for us. And we're working with them and they're giving us very attractive pricing. So what I'd like for you to do is keep an eye on well.com and watch for these packages. Because not only do you get the materials, you're going to get how to certify. You're going to get all these all in one package, so it's going to be easy for you. Now, the second part of this is we're working with labs to get the cost down. We don't have all the costs yet, but we're very, very close. You just need to know that uh, right now to certify in any metal, typically it's up to about $2,000. We're trying to get that cost down between five and $700. So again, stay tuned to well.com. Thanks for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.